What is going on everybody? My name is Aaron Cates and welcome back to the channel. Now today we're going to be fixing the rocker panels on my truck, but I do not own a welder and I'm going to show you how we're going to be doing that. My truck is originally from Michigan. Uh, a lot of you guys know if you follow my channel, I live in Florida. This truck spent two years in Michigan. Its first two years of life, it was up in one of the worst rust states there could be. So let me show you what the rust looks like on this truck. Now this is the passenger side. Up here in our cab corner, we've got some push through spots and a couple little bubbles in the paint. And then our rocker panel is rusty. It's not terrible, I've seen a lot worse, but there is definite rust in it. Now I will be showing you guys how to do the driver side. I'm going to do the passenger side myself because in my opinion, it is a lot worse and I want to get a hang of how to do that. If I can do that side, I can show you guys how to do this side a lot easier. This is the driver side. As you can tell, the hole is a lot bigger, but as far as rust itself goes, that is basically the only hole. There's a little one right there and there's some light bubbles in the paint, but compared to the other side, there's no rust in the cab corner or anything like that. There's no bubbles, there's nothing. But I'm gonna jump in, I'm gonna do that passenger side and I just wanted you guys to have a quick look at how it looked before and after I do it, how it looks and I'll show you how to on the driver's side because there's less, there's less to do really. Showed you the passenger side and told you I was gonna work on it and then I'd show you guys how to do the driver's side because the passenger side was a lot worse. I impressed myself. Let me show you. This is the passenger side. Um, if you remember, there was rust all right in here. There were holes back over here. Now uh, it's got some just gloss black spray paint drying on it, but you couldn't even tell it was there. I'm gonna show you guys how to do the driver's side. So let's jump right into it. So to start this out, you wanna use sandpaper. Now you can use just normal hand sandpaper like this, which this is 80 grit, which I've been using by hand, or you can use a DA sander, what I've been using to do the whole panel, and I've got 40 grit. Uh, the 40 grit works great. It gets down through that paint really fast. And like always guys, I'll link down everything down in the description. This is the same DA sander I used in the uh, bumper video where I painted my bumper caps. Um, as you guys saw, respirator, definitely want to wear that. Definitely want to wear eye protection. If you have like a 3M respirator that actually filters the air, I highly suggest that. But I do not own one of those, so this is next best thing. Let's get into sanding. All right, and just like that, we are down to the bare metal now. Now, what I like to do, I have a little pair of needle nose pliers. I like to come in and try and bend a lot of this stuff out so I can kind of get an idea of all the rust on the inside. So now little pieces like this, I like to come in and just break it off because I mean, it's not doing anything but getting in the way. It goes from being small hole to a bigger hole because you break out a lot of this rotten crap and you get to where it's safe metal and that's when you start filling it in with the adhesive sheets from bondo and like always everything will be linked down below but these are the adhesive sheets that are going to be going in here so you, you you can get rid of a lot of this metal all right now i'm going to show you my trick on cleaning the inside of this out as you guys can see i've got a square end tip uh it cleans nice and see in the reflection the vacuum or right there you want to try and bend this metal to where you can fit the end in there 
Now, if your hole isn't this big, I don't suggest just like cutting out a massive hole. You might find another trick into getting all the old metal out, but let me show you why I wanna do this. Inside this hole, there's a bunch of little pieces of rusted out metal. And if you leave that in there, that's just going to hold moisture and rot this out again after you fix it. It'll just rot somewhere else, somewhere down here or over here or even back over here because there's a little gap in between the rocker and the cab corner right down here. I learned that on the other side. So if you don't get all this out, what you're doing now is just a waste of time. So I like to vacuum all of it out. It goes in this old vacuum. Don't use your mom or your grandmother's or your sister's or your aunt's sister's inside vacuum because odds are they're probably gonna break your arm if you, you ruin their vacuum or break other parts of your body. So get you an old vacuum, an old shop vac, anything like that. And go to town on your little rust hole. Okay, once you have your hole completely all vacuumed out and there's no more little rust particles in there, I like to get some rust reformer. Now, this will be linked down below. It is Rust-Oleum. Uh, I know there's the Pour 45 or Pour whatever it is, Pour 15 or something like that, that comes in a big gallon drum that you can paint. Well, I got this because it sprays and I knew I couldn't really get a paintbrush in there. And my trick with this is kinda just fill the hole and do a couple of coats on the inside. It dries super fast. And this helps stop the rust from spreading from what I know. Guys, I live in Florida. I'm not from the Rust Belt. Um, this is my attempt at fixing something that lived in the Rust Belt. And I'm not a professional, so you guys are probably gonna be like, Rust-Oleum's Rust Reformer's crap, or should've used Pour 15, or you should've used this. This is what I found. This is what I thought would work. So if I'm wrong, you guys can let me know, but you guys are probably gonna tear me a new one down there. So I like to take it, shake it up, and just kind of spray it all on the inside, let it dry and keep repeating. Because each time you spray it, the fumes are gonna spread out on the inside and you're gonna coat something else. So I like to spray it a lot. That way I'm preventing any more rust. I'm going to put quite a bit of this inside this rocker because there is a lot of visible rust I can see on the inside. So I wanna try and stop that. And I know you're supposed to clean rust down to the metal uh, to kind of stop it. I'm hoping this can kind of help that because I can't really clean the inside of the rocker without cutting the rocker open. And that's the whole point of this video is fixing rust without a welder because I do not own a welder. I don't have a way to weld it shut if I cut it open or if I were to replace the whole thing by buying one off a parts truck or buying one offline. I don't have that capability to just own a welder at home. And that's what I'm hoping this video does for a lot of you guys is to kind of show you there's other ways around doing something. Okay, now once it has dried, you can touch it and everything. So it sounds stupid, but take your 40 grit sandpaper or whatever you're using to sand this, sand it back down. You want bare metal when uh, we're putting the fiberglass on. And the whole reason for the rust reformer was to get on any rust on the inside. That's why I sprayed it. Everything on the outside is going to have fiberglass on it. This isn't going to make much of a difference. Okay, now that you have it all sanded back down again, and try and push this metal in as much as you can. Now we're going to get our self-adhesive patch. Now we're just going to basically shove this in the hole. Okay, once you have it folded up like so, you wanna mix your fiberglass. Now, don't worry yet, guys. I'm not gonna leave all these jagged edges out. You wanna get your fiberglass because you want something that's going to hold this down. It says it has an adhesive on it, but I'm gonna tell you now, the adhesive on it is absolute crap. I forgot to mention, mention it earlier in the video. If you're worried about getting anything anywhere, by all means, tape it off. Guys, I'm wrapping this truck. Um, I don't care if overspray gets anywhere. I have to clay bar the whole truck. So anything extra, it's gonna add any extra texture, will be coming off. So I'm not too worried about it. I have this blob of fiberglass. Take the hardener and we're gonna go a little bead all the way across it, just like so. 
as you can tell. You just want to mix it until you're getting a consistent brown color. Okay, getting this to stick on the first try was an absolute fail. I got the little patch over here to stick on. And the fiberglass hasn't completely set up yet, but I've got a corner over here that's stuck on. So I'm gonna go around and trim what I can. And I guarantee you, if you're a, a bodywork guy and you use fiberglass, you're probably wanting to hit me right about now. Don't worry, I wanna hit me too sometimes. I'm going to go back in and apply some more fiberglass. I'm going to try and fill a lot of this in. That way I can start sanding this down. Filling all of that in. We've got mainly this side. We still have to come back in here and fill this. I've got two holes down here that are patched. And the hole that was right here is basically covered. We're gonna take our 40 grit and go completely over this, try and smooth this out, open up any air pockets if there are any. Okay, I went and sanded it down. We've got down here pretty smoothed out this hole down here. We have a little tiny hole right there that I'm just gonna put fiberglass over. We've got all this smoothed out. Got this being shaped right now. Still have a lot more to put in here before we can call it done, but I mean, guys, this is solid. This isn't like, I know you guys see this big hole right here, but fiberglass is solid. Once I get these holes filled and smoothed out, you you won't even know i i promise you so we're gonna go ahead and throw another coat in here i'll show you what it looks like i'm not gonna keep doing time lapses i'm gonna do short clips of in between okay we just finished this coat i took a lot and i pressed it in there using the squeegee i mean i literally like pressed it in there till bubbles were coming out the other side so i know this is nice and compact i'm gonna have to sand it down again till there's a hole in there fill that up got a little hole down here i've got to fill in but for the most part, we're starting to come all together. I apologize for the background noise. They are paving my road right now, but I have to update you before I go. Uh, I actually sanded down too far right here and peeled that off. So I had to put another one on and start over. But see that one there? It is completely still stuck up there. And we've got this smoothed out. That's down to the metal right there, but got a little bit of a low spot right here. We have a low spot right here you can see where the, the lip of the metal sheet is coming out you can see the outline of the metal sheet up there we have a couple low spots in here and get that filled in get that right there filled in and we will be ready to prime it and another clip got that filled in we're all good down there. That's actually, that came out really smooth. Uh, to sand it down, just flush. We've got this worked in over here. Looks like a glob. It is a glob. You sand it out, it's no longer glob. All right, everyone, again, I apologize for all the background noise. They are still paving my road, but I wanted to update you. I have officially sanded it down. It is all smooth. I have no more low spots. I have no more chip spots. Everything is completely covered. I have completely sanded it down. It is butter smooth. Now I'm going to take my Bondo gray filler primer, get it all shaken up and spray one light coat, just like normal spray painting. You're gonna spray a light coat, then another coat, and then another coat. I'm not gonna bore you with a time lapse. All right, everybody, just like that. We are all primed and we are ready for paint. I'm going to lightly sand this with like a thousand grit just to get it smooth. Make sure there's no like bubbles or anything on it. And you guys know, I didn't tape anything off. Like I said, I'm wrapping the truck. I'm not worried about taping or anything like that. If there's overspray, there's overspray. Okay, well, besides how absolutely disgusting the truck is from the sanding, the rocker is done. You, you can't even tell where there was rust at. I mean, it honestly looks 
fantastic. I'm so happy with this outcome. And like always, everything that I use in this video will be linked down below. Uh, this is actually very, very easy to do. It's just very, very time consuming. You're constantly reapplying, sanding, reapplying, sanding. You guys can see how disgusting my truck is from sanding. I've sanded so much today, it's not even funny. But the whole, the whole thing is just patience. You apply it on and you have to sand. And you sand it down and you reapply. And you just keep doing that until you have a nice smooth surface. Now I tried on the passenger side over here. I did the fiberglass and then I did Bondo Gold over top of it, the body filler, hoping that it would make it a little bit smoother. But honestly, I didn't notice much of a difference between that and fiberglass. So then I tried some glazing putty and I didn't really notice a difference there either. So then I went from the glazing putty to the filler primer. And honestly, that's why on the driver's side, I skipped the body filler and the glazing putty. So I didn't notice a difference in them. I went straight from the fiberglass to the filler primer and I'm very happy with the way it turned out. I did notice a little more tiny holes on the side. I didn't do the glazing putty. So maybe use glazing putty when you do yours, if you're wanting a buttery smooth surface with no little pinholes, but I wasn't really too worried about it. It's the bottom of the truck and I run 14 wides. So it's gonna have little tiny rock chips everywhere, no matter what, but it, this was very, very easy. Anyone could do this in my opinion. This is my first time ever doing body work in my life. I've never touched Bondo before and I was able to achieve that. You just can't be afraid to jump out there and try something. So thank you guys for watching the video. Like I said, everything will be down in the description below. Uh, anything from the Bondo to the DA sander to the sanding pads, everything I use in this video will be down below. Make sure to go down and hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, and I'll catch you on the next one. See ya. Thank you.